Welcome to episode four of the Eastside Morales podcast. I'm your host, Rick Garcia Vega. And on this week's episode of the Eastside Morales podcast, we have the good brother, Gorilla Roo. Uh, Gorilla Roo is the founder and creator of RCG, which is also known as River City Giants. Now, for those who are not yet familiar with RCG, uh, RCG is a brand that specializes in custom fitted hats uh, that's in collaboration with New Era. Now, RCG is still in its grassroots stages, but it hasn't prevented Gorilla Roo from uh, releasing over 20 different styles and variations of these custom fitted hats. And that's just in a few short years. Uh, Gorilla Roo and RCG have also released the limited runs on hoodies and tees as well, uh, therefore not limiting his creativity. Um, but with that said, uh, I just wanted to bring Gorilla Roo on, talk a little bit about how he started RCG, um, the growth of RCG, and the future of RCG. Um, so without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Gorilla Roo. You know, basically, I just wanted to, you know, get you on this podcast because, you know, I've been watching the grind. I call it. I caught the grind a little bit late, not at the beginning, you know what I'm saying? Because I didn't even know um, about how about your hats until you were already a few hats deep, you know what I'm saying? Right, yeah. Um, and then uh, I just started watching it uh, pick up, you know, and uh, I thought that was pretty dope, man. I thought it was, I think it's dope when somebody finds a lane of some cool shit. And it's popping off, you know what I'm saying? That's the dopest shit ever, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, um, well, you know, we, we're like the same age, and uh, we grew up in that era. You know, we were kids in the 80s, became men in the 90s, you know what I'm saying? And, like, uh, you know, we grew up during that era where you had to be fresh, you know what I'm saying? And <clears throat> I always had this aspiration or inspiration, whatever you want to say, to like create a streetwear brand that was like sports inspired. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because I had all these ideas running through my head and just randomly just thought of River City Giants and just ran with it from there. So, um, River City Giants, River City, San Antonio. Right. 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 San Antonio, Texas. Talk about Texas. Talk about growing up in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, growing up in San Antonio, man, was at times it was it was it was cool. Sometimes it was boring and shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A small town, but still a city at the same time. And uh, you know, being growing up in the era we grew up in, you know, like everything. A lot of you know that I know was self taught you know, about the culture, like, from hip-hop to, to, uh, fashion, to everything, you know, nobody really put me on, it was for me watching TV, chilling at Grandma's house, you know what I'm saying, like, when cable was finally available, and then, like, Rap City, all that shit, you know what I'm saying, I was inspired, you know what I'm saying, by clothing, colors caught my eyes, the greens, reds, blues, yellows, you know what I'm saying, like, what were some of the brands? Huh? What are some of the brands? From oh back in the man, days? of course, you know Polo. My mom had me like in polos since I was a kid. I saw I had pictures on the wall at my mom's house. <laughs> Button down polo, little little horsey, the brown horsey too, OG shit. And um, you know uh, Tommy Hill figure when it was popping, of course. And then uh, then you had like you know Pelly Pell and. All that stuff, you know what I'm yeah, saying? It's like a transition. this transition, you know what I'm saying? Like, and then of course when you know, obviously you know, Nas and Wu Tang, all them motherfuckers dropped. It was like, yo, yeah. it put everything like all the pieces together. It was like, yo, man, rocking jumpsuits like track suits with fucking sneakers on the street. Like, man, you supposed you supposed to wear that shit to attract me, not on the fucking street. But you know that was like, that's the shit that fucking like. That's how you me. saw it? That's yeah. how you saw it when you first saw it? Yeah, that's, like, that's what inspired like, me. Like, what are you I, doing wearing a tracksuit? I man? thought it was so fucking dope. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yo, yeah. like, motherfuckers wearing, like, 
Agassi shit on the street, you know what I'm saying? Like the sportswear, sportswear on the street, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like that's I think how the birth of streetwear started. Yeah, people don't even know Sports, like yeah, never you know like that. uh like Stussy, you know what I'm saying? Like I used to rock Stussy back in the day, back in the day at the and I used to cop Stussy at this store called called Yaga North Star Mall. It's not there anymore, and like obviously that shit's long gone. I used to cop fucking. Uh, Stussy there And then people don't even know The dude that started Supreme Worked for Stussy Started at Stussy And it's like All these people Like don't know The history behind Streetwear And like For me Like those are all Like brands that I like Polo Tommy Stussy uh, Massimo um, I, Shit I, I was even thinking The other day When I was or You know When I was in Maui Not the other day But when I was in Maui During Black Friday I was like Damn I even used to rock That brand Maui yeah, Maui. I don't, I don't yeah, remember yeah, that yeah, brand, yeah, Maui. Yeah, I used to rock that. So it was like you know, like I'm I'm inspired by by those memories, and I, I just wanted to kind of recreate you know uh, a feel of that. And then it started with the hats, and I always knew I was gonna start transitioning into clothing, and it's been a slow transition because it's not as easy as people think, you know, like especially when you're doing it all by yourself, you know, you're financing it yourself. People think people think it's easy. It ain't easy. You know what I'm saying? It's you gotta find you gotta find the right uh, the right uh, the right people to work with. You gotta know who you can tell, what to and who not to tell. Mm -hmm. You know what information to release, yeah. what not to release. You know or whatever. It's like when you're dealing with business and you're just always trying to find the best deal, trying to find the best price on whatever you're doing because. But you want to have a good quality at the same time. And then produce whatever you want to produce when it comes to your brand, but make it dope. You know what I'm saying? So that's my vision. That's my whole, the whole stance behind RCG is quality and dopeness. So describe um, RCG, you know, and the logo. The logo, uh, for those who don't know, is the Olmec. Right, the Olmec head. So RCG, River City Giants. I just felt like myself and uh, my my people, you know, that I hang out with, people that I've been friends with forever, you know, I just felt like, you know, we've done a lot of stuff and I just felt, it, it, for the culture here in the city, and, you know, I've been always true to San Antonio, wherever I go, I always rep it, whether I'm in New York, Chicago, L.A., Fort Lauderdale, where are you from? San Antonio, River City. And I just felt like I have a giant mind state. And that's where the whole giant came from. Like, I think big, I think large. Um, and, and that's the whole concept behind it. Um, the logo, the OMEC, was kind of symbolic. <clears throat> it didn't come till later, actually. Um, when I first initially started it, it was all just the idea of creating something that was just script-based. And then... Um, it was funny because I actually got the idea before I even started River City Giants for the OMET, having to be on the phone with the homie. <clears throat> His name is Ish. And we were talking about um, like ancient culture, Egyptians, Aztecs, Mayans, Omex. I was like, yo, I was like, the Omex. So then the Omex, I was like, damn. And it just clicked. I was like, that'd be dope for like a brand. Yeah. But I tucked it away in the mental Rolodex and mm -hmm. didn't think anything of it. Well, like early 2014 is when I first did my first run of hats. And it was the G script and it had River City Giants on the back. And uh, I just got on the Instagram like 2012. I had barely used it. I think I posted a few pictures. I was in New Orleans, and that was it. A few pictures here and there. And then I started noticing, like, people were buying hats, and I was like, I was already in the hats. Yeah. So I was like, damn, what is this? So I got my first run of hats, and um, just connecting with people on Instagram. It all just kind of connected from there. Uh, somebody saw my hat. <clears throat> Homie's name is uh, Dam Campo, at Dam Campo. Uh, on Instagram, check him out. 
a cool homie. So which hat was that that he, he first saw? He saw the G hat. The first one The Yankee made? colorway. That was with, the first hat you ever made? Yeah. Okay. It was a Yankee spinoff. Yeah. I wanted to, I always liked the Yankee hat. So I did a spinoff of it. He liked it and he posted it on the blog, uh, NewEraCatTalk.com. That's his blog? I don't know how the whole... Or is it a forum? No, it's a blog. It's a blog? It's a full-on blog. It's not in... It's not in uh, they're not doing anything now. Yeah. Uh, I don't know something... That's on a good domain end. name, though. Huh? That's a good domain name. Hell yeah, hell yeah. But uh, I don't know what happened on, on you know, the business side of things. Yeah. They're no longer, you know, hosting the blog or whatever. But he, uh, he was a cool dude, man. He was like, yo... Hit me up right away. Yo, that is dope. You know, can I post it on on uh, on the blog? I was all, yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck yeah. I was like, I had already been following the blog. It's funny, man, because I was really in the hats and I was like trying to like find out, you know, what was popping, you know, all the streetwear brands, you know, all the, the dope minor league hats, trying to, you know, cop those joints. So I was always looking. So I went to New Era Cap and, um, I was like, fuck. I'm like, New Era Cap? I was like, New Era Cap Talk.com? They want to fe feature me? That's dope. So I was like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sent them the picture, did a little write-up on it, and it was just like a like a slow build-up from there. Yeah. That was like the first like seed that was planted. Then I did another one. I did a, a RCG, Cross Bats. It was a Kelly Green Crown, Black Bill, uh, Gray Underbrim. And uh, <clears throat> that one took off. People liked that one. And it was just like, you know, like kind of just... So did it get reposted again on the blog? Yeah, so like that hat got posted again okay. on the blog. Uh, well, I got posted again on the blog with that hat. So that was twice. People started noticing like, what the fuck is this? River City Giants. Like, what is this? Yeah. And uh, people would hit me up on my Instagram, DM me. Yo, I want to buy the hat. Boom. Sell it to them. And that's how it all started. And it all built up from Instagram. Now, one dollar or no fucking advertisement dollars spent whatsoever. Yeah. All Instagram built it from 2014 till now. Yeah. Okay. That, okay, so two years. So three years. Three years. You, uh, you've been doing this. How many releases have you had? I want to say like now to date well over 20 20 yeah i can't i can't i can't count right now because there's a lot of them yeah <laughs> but um at least 25 to date maybe more and uh the whole omec thing came later when i was when i wanted to kind of switch switch gears um i was like you know, man, I need to switch it up a little bit. And I thought of the Omex shit. You know, I was like, yo, I need to, I need to make a power move. So, you know what I'm saying? Unleash the Omex head. And what happened with that was this dude who's like another cool dude on Instagram. You got to follow him, Farm the Chef. <clears throat> he posted the hat because he copped one. He posted the hat on Instagram. And, um. He stays in New York. Real cool dude. This dude is like followed by a lot of people because he has a large hat collection. He's got like, I don't know, man, like easily over a thousand hats. That's crazy. Well over a thousand hats. He probably has 3,000 hats maybe. I know he had like, he has like samples. He has a lot of connections to people in New Era, let's yeah. say that. And he knows a lot of a lot of people connected to New Era. A lot of people look out for him. So he's he's well connected, cool dude. He bought my hat, he posted it. When he posted it, it was like wildfire. It yeah. took off. What happened was um this cool chick, her name is uh Shy. She bought it and um So she saw it from him? She saw it from Farm and Chef. Yeah. She uh she copped it. She stays out in Honolulu or on on uh, Oahu, I believe. Please forgive me. I'm I'm you know a little inebriated right now. Uh, but uh, 
Honolulu, I think, is on Oahu. I'm really messing up right now. But uh, so she stays out there. And when she when she copped the hat, it was like um, Iwa Beach. That's where where she stays out okay. off of e, in Iwa Beach area. Um, but I think that's same. That's all on the same island. Anyway, so she copped it, and it just spread like wildfire out on the islands. Believe it or not, to uh, to say the least, um, in Hawaii, uh, and a lot of people just started gravitating towards it. And this was which hat. This was the, the very the first, first one, which was black. It was all black. Now, there's two versions of the stone head. One had the RCG etched into the forehead, which is the very first drop. And that's the one that Farm the Chef copped. That's the one that she saw. That's the yeah. one that she copped. Yeah. And, uh, and so, like, I think the reason why they kind of gravitated towards this because there's similarities behind the old neck head and what, for people who don't know, the Olmec is a Mesoamerican culture, civilization that existed. Well, I don't even know how long. It was, it's, it's definitely a long time ago. They, pre, they predate the Mayans and, and Aztecs and the Toltecs, all of them. They were like one of the very first uh, marked in history Mesoamerican cultures that, are, that we know of. And they built these or carved these large stone heads, you know, that uh, like sometimes six to eight feet tall. Now, are these, are the, were the stone heads the images that the Omex were they really that size, the Omex, or was the Omex uh, just a civilization that believed in or had these? I think it was uh, very similar to like to the Egyptians, where you know they built you know the Sphinx and. Um, all these huge, like, massive statues, columns, yeah. statues, and, like, and etchings. And you're talking about hieroglyphics. Like, you're talking about columns, like, 50 feet, 60, 75 feet, who knows? Like, at least. And they they got hieroglyphics from top to bottom. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, like, so I think, like, ancient cultures like that just, like, were... They had nothing else to do. They didn't have the internet. They didn't have drive-in. They didn't have... Or the movies. They didn't have, like, you know, McDonald's or any of that... All they had was themselves, jungle, stars, air, water. Let's be creative. <laughs> so you have a lot of time on your hands. Yeah. And when you have a lot of time on your hands and you study and, and, and people are just naturally by nature builders. You know what I'm saying? That in some way they build. You know, and, and sometimes they build to destroy, sometimes they build to create. But it's like that's that's just the nature of human beings. By nature we just are trying to like tinker with something. Yeah. You know, and so when you have that much time on your hands, you can carve large rocks, stones in the middle of the jungle, like, and find them, you know, hundreds of years, thousands of years later, you know, um, bury, you know, scientists or archaeologists. Or, because it's still the same stone that's, it's just carved. Right. Instead of yeah, being yeah, rough. yeah, 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 yeah. And so that's the whole concept behind that. And like, I think the reason why they like... People like them gravitated in, in Hawaii is because, you know, they have the tiki gods, you know, where like their images kind of portrayed in the same, the same way. Yeah. Uh, and I was like talking to her one day, I was like, yo, I was like, why, why is it that like a lot of these, uh, these Hawaiian people are, are gravitating towards it? And she just said cultural similarities. And I was like, I mean, yeah, I guess if you think about it, it's like maybe indirectly, I mean, obviously not directly, but you know, if you think about all the people that built those types of structures were along the equator, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Polynesians, you know what I'm saying? The Olmecs, the Egyptians, yeah. you know, uh, people even like the people... Pacific Islanders. The Pacific Islanders are yeah. even like the people like in India, like in China, they were building mm -hmm. structures, you know, along that... Eastern culture. The, each, the Eastern, Eastern culture. And it's like... So I think uh, when you had a lot of time... And, and and I think people now, uh, when we grew up learning history, I think we kind of didn't give those people enough credit for the intelligence level that they really had. I think we were kind of just like taught that, you know, we we came from cavemen, which I I don't believe. Yeah, like um, civilization started in the you know like the nineteen twenties or some shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and there's people believe there's some yeah. people that believe civilization started two thousand years ago, 
you know, the whole tie into the Bible thing is like, uh, no, there were civilizations way before that. Yeah, that's that's and, recent history. Yeah, that's recent history. Yeah. And like, so um, I was always intrigued by that. And so that, I think that's like I said, why they, they, they really liked it. And so like when she copped it, it was like, a, it was like a, 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 when she copped the hat, it was like a, a wildfire, you know, effect. And it just took off from there. And it just, it got to the point where I was, you know, uh, every hat drop, you know, was, um, was selling out, you know, like I was doing smaller runs, you know, I wasn't doing big runs like I or doing bigger runs like I do now, um, because I've kind of built it up to that. But when I first started, I was doing, you know, pretty solid runs. I mean, enough to get to the point where I've sold hats in Russia. I sold hats in Germany, England, uh, Singapore, uh, Spain, uh, Canada. I don't know where. So, I'm... what was like the 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 point where you went went from not making the hats to making the hats? Like, what drove you to that um, to that point? Because I mean, obviously, you gotta you know you live a you know a, you're a family man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you have responsibilities and you know. I don't know, man. I have a passion for doing something. Always doing. Uh, well, I have a passion for making money. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's not lie. Everybody's trying to make money, but if I can do something that I love, like and create like you know a brand that I, I I'm I'm I consider myself a, a an ideas guy and I like a brand curator in my mind. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm holding all these ideas like a museum, like a like you know, like the like a custodian of records, you know, mm -hmm. and like so I'm always like trying to think of these ideas and how to get them out, and like I think that's the drive behind creating the brand. That's the drive behind creating obviously hats uh, for the brand, and like the whole new era thing. Obviously, new era is like the Jordan of hats. Like everybody knows that. You know what I'm saying? The Nike of hats. Nike of hats, yeah. yeah. We'll say Nike of hats, not yeah. the Jordan anymore. Well, yeah. it used to be Jordan when Jordans were cool. The, the Jordan sneaker, but yeah. Like the Jordan, Jordan brand, the Jordan brand is yeah. But Nike is 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 what I, is 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 a better way of putting it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like, and so that's the way I look at it. Well, it's I guess it's kind of shifted now in a lot of people's eyes because people are Adidas heads now. But uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, honestly, like New Era just holds the crown for top quality are they perfect no but neither is anything nothing is ever perfect that you buy like there's you know yeah but it's brand recognition you know it's what I'm brand, it holds if it was a different brand hat it might not sell the same no it wouldn't but because it's new new era is the standard the bar you right know what i'm saying because new That's era you obviously yeah you're right because obviously the new era brand is what's held the mlb up for years mm -hmm. And everybody knows that... And we all wanted those hats. Yeah, we all wanted those hats. And that's kind of where the whole passion of it started was... I still remember going as a kid. I forgot what age I was. I was probably like 10 maybe. I don't know. I went to a Texas Rangers game and I got to see Nolan Ryan pitch. And it was like... Um, I was like, I just wanted a hat. I just remember that. I just remember going by the by the, by the the shop and... Uh, I was like, yo, I was asking moms. I was like, mom, I was like, I want a fitted hat. Moms was not having that shit. She was like, no. Nah. Because see, where where I grew up was, uh, I, even though I went to a private school, like where I grew up was at the time kind of like a gang area. And we grew up during the gang era, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was like where it was real heavy. And like Four Corner Sector is where I stayed off of Bassey and Blanco. And um, that was definitely like, you heard gunshots on the regular because it was just gang banging everywhere. I wasn't in the gang, you know what I'm saying? But there was gangs everywhere. So she was always like annoyed about me wearing like, you know, certain colors and, um, you know, moms, you know, they'd be bugging like that, yeah, always yeah, really yeah. looking out for you, like, which is that what moms, moms are supposed to do. Exactly. But um, yeah, she'd be like, no, 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 I ain't buying that for you. That's gang related. I'm like, mom, it's not gang related. What? Yeah. And eventually, like, she broke. She broke down. She caught. She caught me one. And that's where the whole love of fitted hats came from. 
And um, so, which what was your first fit of that? The Texas Rangers. Texas Rangers hat. Okay. Cause we went back like a couple of years later. Yeah, yeah. I was a little older, and I asked her for one, and she got me one. That's, That's what true. I remember. And this was before they had the MLB dude on the back. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was wow. like it was blank. You know what I'm saying? And it was like so. I've been in a new era since since then, and I was going through some old pictures the other day, high school. What did I have on new era hats? I had either a Detroit Tigers hat, Yankees hat. Boston Red Sox hat, you know what I'm saying, you name it, I had it, you know, like, I was just in the hats, um, so hats are nothing new to me, it's like something that's kind of a part of me, sometimes my son be saying, like, dad, do you have to wear a hat, you know, like, yeah. like, and I'm like, dude, it's my hat, all right, like, I gotta rock it, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> like, where, whenever I'm out, always you know, promoting, yeah, like, and, and then he's but like, it's dope, you know what I'm yeah, saying, yeah, yeah, so it's, it's dope now because, like, the brand has grown and, like, it's cool to see my fam. My fam's 100% behind it. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that's even better. And there's a lot of a lot of good things that happen. You know, I had the, the drop in Maui uh, with a good guy named Chris um, who runs 180 out there in Maui. Uh, and that dude went above and beyond when I went out there for the pop-up. He went above and beyond to, to look out for me, and uh, uh, he, uh, he he hit me to a lot of a lot of information in the game. And uh, so, talk about how that that connection happened. I mean, explain the situation. Randomly, uh, I'm just this. I think I I forgot what hat I dropped. I think I just dropped uh, a camo flock. It was all camo, woodland camo, and like the stone head had yellow uh, canary yellow eyes, and the pyramid was yellow on the back. And um, I just dropped the hat. And uh, I just got this message through Instagram randomly from 180. And I knew what 180 was. I knew of the store. I was familiar with them. And I was like, what? I was like, why is 180 hitting me up? So, like, I go to the message. And uh, Chris was obviously, you know, he, it was him. And he was like, yo, man, I really like the brand. I really like, you know, you know what you're doing. And and the movement and you know I really be you know up for doing a collab if you're if you're down for it man I didn't even respond for like two or three days I was like I was stunned because I was like what I was like dang it's crazy like yeah. you know it's finally like starting to like people are finally starting to like really really notice and I was like the the brand is really taking off and like and uh, he was like, yeah, he's like, hit me up. And then so, like, I waited a few, three, two or three days and hit him back. And I was like, so what do you have in mind? Mm -hmm. And then that's how it all came into play. And we ended up doing the drop. Uh, we ended up doing a snapback and a fitted. Um, did a turquoise colorway. Did an all black colorway. Um, and then... You know, it was it was it was good. It was it was a good experience being out there and, and meeting even some a lot of the people that had been buying my hats, you know, that from Maui. Yeah. Finally get to meet them. Um and, and there was even some people who I never even I didn't know how they got my hats. Like, oh yeah, I got one of your hats. Like, I don't know how they got my hat. Yeah. yeah. But they got it, you know? Oh, cause because of um you mailing everything out. Yeah, yeah, mailing the everything out. Sometimes, like, I'm not paying attention to the name or yeah. whatever. And, like, I sent a hat to a homie out there and didn't know I did. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, I got your hat. I'm like, damn, for real? Or, like, my hats are, um, believe it or not, man, not as much anymore. Um, it's kind of, like, people are kind of just holding on to them. But before, people were actually kind of, like, trading them uh, in, like, hats with, like, other brands, you know, yeah. which I won't mention just because I'm not, not because I'm not trying to like, that I don't think they're dope or whatever, that I'm not, you know, I'm just not trying to hype anybody up, but it's like, um, but reputable brands and, I, the, and I'm being traded or sold like on these forums, you know, that are, you know, where people go to sell hats on, on Facebook and I'm like, dang, so like a couple of people may have got the hats that way, I don't know, but, uh, it just kind of all came about to where, you know, people are, uh, they're, they're demanding them now, uh, 
to the point where I'm trying to think of just ahead of the ball game. So now I have like a lot of stuff already in the pipeline. Um, trying to I'm trying to come different with different uh, colorways. I'm trying to come different on on uh, newer designs. Um, trying to flip it up, you know, just make the brand fresh. I'm also getting into like. I'm literally gonna try and, and and start eventually transitioning into cut and sew, um, newer designs for t-shirts, hoodies, accessories. And right now you have t-shirts, hoodies, hoodies and hats. Right and now. Hats. And um. And then you have something else you just posted on Instagram. Uh, yeah. Was that a thermal? That's actually just a t-shirt design that I have coming out. Um, it's for a hat drop that people definitely uh, definitely like if you're into camouflage um, you'll like this one and the whole the whole story behind that you know was I wanted to create something that kind of tied into that on, with a t-shirt to the hat um, and there's you know a military thing behind it and it's you know the whole vessel you know of peace or warfare mm -hmm. was like an idea I had like um it just it fit, you know. It was like because we're 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 built like that, you know what I mean. So you got a never, never before, never seen before uh, logo logo about to drop. Not a new logo, but a new colorway on the hat. The people yeah. will definitely dig. But there's definitely new colorways and new logos that are gonna drop. That are people are definitely gonna dig. Um, I have uh, one. I'm rocking this one right yeah, now. I see one right now. Um, that's that's one that's coming out. Uh, I'm dropping that one early March. I'm actually gonna film a dope promo for it. Uh, we have a Toltec Warrior downtown here in San Antonio, and so we're gonna film like a dope promo near it. And then uh, I'm actually gonna start transitioning in a, a promo vids for my hats. Yeah. Um, instead of just you know, basic pictures. I'm trying to step up the brand, like, presentation also. Revamping the website. Um, RCGofficial.com for people who don't know. So why... Okay, so explain why having a website is important as opposed to just doing it directly through uh, Instagram. It's a pain in the ass. Uh, I try to do it like that, man. I try to do it directly straight from Instagram. And you know what? Like, <laughs> I had this, like, idea of, like, trying to walk or go into Instagram offices and be like, yo, let's sit down and talk. Okay, let's create a freaking e-commerce platform on Instagram. Yeah. Because I guarantee you, motherfuckers would make money, and so would they. And so it was like... You know, like, maybe I shouldn't have given out that idea, yeah. but, oh, well, who cares? You know what I'm saying? And so, like, it's just a pain in the ass, man, to do shit on Instagram, like, when you're doing a direct message, because then you got to follow, you're like, oh, wait, hold on, what size do you want? And it's like, man, it's a pain in the ass. Having a website simplified all that. Yeah. It directed all the traffic to there, um, and so... Um, I, I created a website, I, you know, and um, bought, you know, every, well, any domain possibility name for my shit. I bought it, so rights to it, so nobody could grab it up. And so, um, I just did that, and it was, it's cool. Now it's easy, like, people want to, when I, when I want to drop something, I just go on Instagram, I post a picture of it, and, you know, I give, like, sometimes I give, like, a little, you know, notification. Sometimes I give none, and I'll just drop it, and people go to the website and just copy it, and then I ship out like normally I'll drop it like on a Friday, and then I'll ship out like a Monday. You know what I'm saying? Because Saturday, you know, I'm trying to process all the orders. Sunday, obviously, the post office is closed. Yeah. Um. So I just take everything Monday, Monday. and ship it out Monday. Sometimes Tuesday, you know, but I try not to let it lag too long because I don't want people waiting for their packages. So um, I've been told, you know, I ship pretty fast. Uh, there, ha there are or have been instances where I got packages back um, from the post office um, for stupid reasons, but I, I got the packages back out to the people and, you know, deeply apologized and even actually, like, compensated a couple people um, 
you know, for the inconvenience. Because you're like, you know, you're getting all these orders in, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. still grassroots. Yeah, it's still grassroots. You know? And to be honest, man, it's funny because a lot of people will hit me up, like, on Instagram directly or even Facebook if they're following me. Um, they know my government name. Um, like, they'll say, yo, yo, you guys, RCG, y'all, y'all guys, man, you guys are official. And I'll be like, if they only knew, it's a one-man army. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that, I run the whole business, like, the whole operations of, like, uh, you know, sending in the hats to to get pressed up. Doing marketing. Marketing. You know, uh, sales, all that. Yeah. customer service, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, customer service. Uh, shipping. Shipping. You know, that's uh, a lot People of want the tracking, like, they hit me up. I provide them with the tracking number. I don't hit them off with the tracking number directly because, and to be honest, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a pain, man. It is, but... You know, people who bought from me know that I'm not, you know, I don't shice anybody. I ship, you know, what I say I'm going to ship. Yeah. I ship it on time. You know, I business. I'm a, I, yeah, I'm, I'm about business. I'm not about being shady. Um, I know a lot of people, uh, they might be kind of hesitant because they've never seen, they've never seen me before or on, on online or they never like bought from me. So they're a little like, eh, I'm, I'm not sure, you know, and so they're like, They'll ask me a lot of questions. I'm like, yo, G. I'm like, this is like, boom, yeah, boom, boom. This is where it's, it's, it's not that complicated. Yeah, it's like, dude, either you want the hat or you don't. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Buy it. It's on the website. Like, it's all I can tell you. Like, yeah. like there's one guy. What type he, of questions are they asking? There's one guy, man. Every damn hat drop, he hits me up, like, uh, either on, like, a comment or he hits me up directly. And he's like, yo, are these hats wool or poly? polyester and I'm like dude they're poly man like most of the new era caps now are all poly yeah. it's very rare that you have a, a new I mean they're they're out there yeah but you would probably market it as a wool uh, you know what I'm saying wool, yeah it's it wool. not wool you know yeah. what I'm saying like like there are new era hats out there that are produced that are made with wool but the majority of the new era hats you know are made from polyester so he he always will ask the same question, and I give him the it's same window answer. shopping, huh? Yeah, it's window shopping. just like, dude, either you're gonna buy it or you're not. There's yeah. another person. He's never bought a hat from you. Never. And it's like there's another person. He's a troll. That, yeah, another one. They always wanna ask me, oh, do you have this size? Do you have this size? Go to the website. It's right there. Yeah. Go to the web. It's right there. And I'm not trying to be an ass or a dick, nah, nah. but it's like, look, it's like, it's common sense. I told you, it's. At rcgofficial.com, yeah. Yeah. you know, so go look, it's right there. If you really want it, it's there. And like, I always know that people that ask me, it's funny because anybody generally who will ask me any questions about the hat or whatever, nine times out of ten won't buy the hat. It's people who don't ask me anything yeah, that buy the hat, that. yeah, because they're following instructions, right? Yeah, or they just like the hat. Or they're just not, they're not afraid to just buy that. Yeah, they, but they just don't go through the process. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's funny how it works out like that. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, so uh, it, it's, it's, it's pretty dope, man. Everything's just kind of really just taking off. And I have a lot of plans for the future. Possibly, maybe, we've talked about it. We, we haven't revisited the whole idea yet. But me and Chris may do something again. Not sure when. Uh but the ideas that we have are pretty dope. Um, you know, uh, I have some other people. I can't really say who they are. Um, they've reached out to me that want to do um, so some wholesale, um, possibly some you know some collaborations for for drops. But uh, my whole goal this year is to double my releases. So last year, I know for sure within two, 2016, I had 18 drops. Mm-hmm. But I've dropped more hats than that. Um, so within 2016, it was 18. Um, so I'm trying to do at least 36. And I think already I'm like four or five in, you know. Um, and I have a lot of hats just sitting here in my in my house um, that I'm going to be dropping, you know, like the trickle effect. You know, like Chinese water torture, but in a good way. Yeah, you know, in like, a good way. And, uh, so you basically got to... A whole arsenal set up. I have on like hands. I have a good I have a good a good arsenal on hand, and I'm actually ordering hats like 
every two weeks. So again, all these ideas for colorways and just out. yeah, and I'm just trying to just um, rack up and, and stack up and just. Mm. And you know what's so funny is now that I I order bigger runs, I don't sell out anymore, which is cool. But I I make what I invest plus yeah. every time. Yeah. Every time. And you still have inventory. And right? I still have inventory. So what's dope about that is that I actually just got hit up for opportunity for a pop-up shop during Fiesta. Mm-hmm. So I'll be out at Fiesta for all you people. Um, April 29th, I believe it is, at the Blue Star. It's going to be a dope hip-hop show. I'm going to be there uh, with a pop-up shop. You'll see me with a banner. You'll see a four-foot... Omec Stonehead with green eyes out there. Um, so that's what's dope. So for things like that, I'm gonna have like inventory so like I can set up shop and be like, yeah. boom, check it out. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So now like I have two two avenues of income as opposed to one. Yeah. Because I can only imagine that this is just Hopefully, and you market yourself to another um, another market. That another really market because you live here in San Antonio, but all your business is, is elsewhere. Elsewhere, yeah. So and you that haven't kinda, even really been introduced in your own city yet. Yeah. So that you know, I was going to touch on that. So that whole, a lot of people have asked me that, and the reason why I, I kind of approached it from the music standpoint, where you know, I used, well, I still write rhymes. I I never stopped writing rhymes, but. Actually, releasing, re- music. releasing and recording music, you know, like I kind of always, I was always with people who we were always like at that point where we were just about to take off and then like egos got in the way, you know, attitudes got in the way and shit just fizzled out. And so like, I always felt like approaching it like from the music standpoint where I was like, yo, we tell homies like, yo, we need to like try to go to LA. We need to go to New York. We need to fucking just go to New York, Europe invest our own money, take like our own music and just like go out there and just bring people to San Antonio. Mm-hmm. That's the same thing that I, I kind of put into place with when I started marketing these hats. I, I just wanted to get out. Yeah. Bring people in. Mm-hmm. So they're like, what the fuck is River City Giants? Like, yeah. what is that? And then I would just tell people, they're like, oh, that's dope. You know, like, and, 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 it, and uh, so now I'm trying to tap into that market, like here, San Antonio, where I'm virtually unknown, which is funny. So do you have, uh, well, so what do you think the city uh, gravitates towards to? Because obviously you have a, a heavy presence in Hawaii with the Stonehead, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But do you think the Stonehead will resonate the same way in San Antonio? I think because it might. Only because we have a big, culture. you know, culture here. Obviously, there. Well, we got Stoneheads downtown. We got Stoneheads downtown replicas, you know. Yeah. So it was like, um, there's obviously a big Aztec, uh, Mayan, Olmec uh, influence here in the city, and you know, obviously we have a lot of like, you know, people who are descendants of those natives like us. You know, like we're we're all descendants of you know some ancient culture, yeah. and so. Uh, like those people are tied into that, and I think once they find out who I am, they might embrace me. You know, uh, little by little, I notice people from San Antonio are following me on Instagram. Um, but I think it's mainly, like I said, I was just trying to get people drawn into where I was from, and now like it's just to the point where I I think I've planted my stake, my flag high enough to where people here notice what I'm doing outside mm-hmm. and like they're like yo we're gonna bring this dude in and just see if he wants to do a pop up shop for for this event so like they asked me and I was like yeah I'll do it and I think that's just kinda that's kinda hopefully will make things you know just like the way it started in the beginning it'll help me grow here and then even expand in other areas too like you know who knows Houston Austin, yeah. places that I'm not known. There's a few people who, in Houston who buy my hats, uh, a couple people, um, but nobody really knows me yeah. here in Texas. Well, here's your opportunity. Yeah. yeah. 
yeah, this is the opportunity that you know that I'm that I'm looking for to to um, to pretty much like make a mark. Do you have any uh, themed ideas for this like city based? You know, because you have you you just don't have um, lettered hats uh, or the stone head. You have I have one of your hats right now. I got the Toro one. So the 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 meaning behind that one, the Toro hat, was I'm a Taurus, right? And I did a red one and a black one, and it start it stood literally for born a Taurus, die a Taurus. Like you know, like the red obviously is for the birth, and the black is for the death. You know what I'm saying? Because like I'm. I think a lot about life and death, and so like I wanted to kind of, like all my hats are symbolic in some way. They have either like a tie into a hat to like a sports team or a meaning behind it, and that was the meaning behind that hat. You know, um, I wanted to do something different. I have actually like you know have um, this this hat when it's gonna drop. It's a viper hat, and the reason why I did that is because a lot of people man look down on snakes. But I like snakes because I think they're, uh, I, I have admiration for snakes because they're smart um, in a lot of ways. And, and, they're, and they're, uh, they're tough, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. And the same thing with a bull. I'm a bull, though. Mm -hmm. So I, I look at the bull as like, is like I, I'm, I always gravitate towards like stuff that's symbolic, like in the way I think and the way I feel. Symbolic represents something. Yeah, you know? and I have a tie-in with, like, I'm um, fascinated by nature, history, you know what I mean? And so that's kind of, like, also the whole the whole tie-in behind behind that, you know? It's like, there's a lot of different, like, facets to it, a lot of different meanings behind what I do. Um, it's just, you know, it, it's just finally I'm able to, I have that avenue now, I can do it. <laughs> it's like, I can do it on a fucking new era hat. Which is the illest, yeah. You know, um, and things that represent what I, what I, because I always like, you know, what I was saying I want to create streetwear brand. I wanted, you know, mid thirties. I don't want to be looking like I'm, you know, nineteen year old kid, mm -hmm. you know. But I don't want to look like I'm an old geezer either. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I want to create something like that someone my age can wear, or even a little older. You know, and still feel comfortable like wearing it, and not like look how you feel. You know, what right, I'm right, right, and not not feel not feel all like weird about it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And so uh, that's the whole the whole feeling behind. But that. I found myself toning down on a lot that I that I used to do, um, as far as uh, being younger. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I used to wear a lot more colors and and different colorways and things like that and I found I would say within the past few years like just me wearing solid colors you know what I'm saying not really too loud or too flashy anything you know what I'm saying right um, and you know and that but to me that that was like with age you know what I'm saying like the type of shirts that I wear you know things yeah. like that yeah um, cause I didn't want to trying to dress like I'm um, like, I'm still in my early 20s, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because... Or trying to keep up with the 20-year-olds, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's not my style, you know what I'm saying? This is... I'm I'm an adult, but I still like to get fresh, you know what I'm saying? And that's my whole point. Exactly what you just said. Like, I've always... We're, we're, we, <laughs> we're from that fresh era. Yeah. You know, like, we're from that era where if you weren't dressed fresh, motherfuckers are going to clown you. Yeah. You know Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, so... You had, even if, like, you had fucking shit from Solo Serve or fucking, like, Marshalls, like, or whatever, whatever you fucking got your shit from, mm -hmm. like... It had to be fresh. It had to be fresh. Yeah. Like, you had to, like, you know, be the fucking dopest, you know, like, uh, like we all grew up in that era, man. That's at least the, the era I grew up in, and so I still am, like, you know, I gotta dress fresh. It's the foundation. Man. The foundation, you know. It's part of this this culture that we uh, that we got drawn into. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. This hip hop culture. This is what represents us. We, you know. And that's the whole basis behind eighties you know, babies. Right, right. That's the whole. That's the whole basis behind RCG. Is a. Uh, you know, I just wanted to keep shit fresh and keep constantly moving and keep innovating with with different 
different ideas and like I said, I'm gonna even get into accessory stuff and maybe even camping gear. Or, you know, um, yeah, that's dope. That's uh, a dope idea. Yeah, so it's like, hold on for a second, man. Yeah, um, so get into different different stuff like that, like different accessories and um, shit. Yeah, yeah. I kind of, I kind of almost wanted when I when I also created it that way. I wanted it to be like limited, exclusive, not not flooding the market with a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's uh, what I. That's what like solidified like for me. I mean, I knew off top that it was dope, but I liked the way you were releasing it. You know what I'm saying? It was creating value to the product. You know what I'm saying? It just wasn't like... You have a lot of different colorways, but you don't have a lot of uh, releases of that particular colorway. Which one? Of any of them. Oh, no, no, They're no, all no. limited releases. Yeah, that's actually kind of what my whole basis is. I wanted it to, uh, to be where each hat was limited just... Like people are sometimes people get mad that I won't reproduce a hat, and I'm like, I, I might. You never know. I, but I'll flip something yeah, on it. Yeah. I'm not gonna do exactly the same hat. Like for me, like that's not that's not that's, what I wanted to do. That's not moving forward. That's not moving forward in my eyes at all. Creatively. I, creatively, yeah. If you want to build the brand, now some brands can do that. You know, like there are brands out there, people who. We'll just say people that like my brand and like this brand that's from Hawaii. And this brand from Hawaii is dope as fuck. The guy who created it is dope as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Um, but they do that a lot. They create sometimes the same hat. Mm -hmm. Just, but people love it so much. They can do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For me, I wish I could do that, but that's also not what I want to do. Yeah, that's not the route I want to take. You know what I mean? You want to just keep moving forward, but always be creative. Like it's like so. Do you find it like um, so? So what is it the the uh, the struggle between uh, being creative and and doing the business? Because business has you know um, a much more direct approach to things. Being creative, you know that's where you're free thinking and and just. I look at myself as a brand builder. Like, and you know what? Like, I always kind of looked at my... Because, like I said, I'm an ideas guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And But how do you feel that they they connect with each other for you? You know what I'm saying? What what holds greater weight? Uh, definitely business, man. You got to keep your business straight. Um, obviously, if, like, you're going to do business in anything, you got to keep it straight. And then, like, then you also, at the same time, you... You have to be ready to balance, put on more than one hat if you're doing it by yourself, um, like I am. Like, it's it's not easy. It's fucking hard as shit, you know, um, but I still, I love it. Like, I love the whole thrill behind, you know. The um, challenge. It becomes that. It becomes, uh, as an entrepreneur myself, it becomes... Like every new milestone is a a bar set, yeah. And you just want to keep. You don't ever want to lose that feeling of anything, be uh, before that bar was the the last bar you set. You want to keep progressing. You know what I'm saying? Right. And um, in order to do that, you gotta you gotta um, sustain everything and understand every part of the business. Yeah. Um, to keep growing. That's that's a good point. I mean, you gotta you gotta and it's gotta be consistent. And and if you want, like, it doesn't matter. Like it, like, a hundred small like consistent hits is better than one big grand slam. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, for me, like at the same time, I don't want to like people to get tired of it. So like sometimes I have to be like, yo, am I like kind of like, am I kind of like flooding it too much? You know what I'm saying? Am I kind of like I don't know, uh, I kind of have those, like, questions, and when you have, like, a brand, and you're putting out a product, if you haven't had that question in your mind, then you're, something's wrong with you. 
Now, do you feel like um, you have to keep recreating the same colorway, or do you feel like um, if you did different um, images or logos, uh, do you think you can... It's hard to tell, bro. You, you know, know what I'm saying? Like, it's hard. I've thought about that, man. Like, is switching up the image the question? Yeah. Or is it the colorway? Sometimes way? you got to take the risk, right? Yeah. So that's why I've actually done side, you know, projects where, you know, I've done not necessarily the Olmec head, but still something tied into the Olmec or something like, I, you know, what you're rocking, the Toro hat. You know, um, it's but you still, also have the um, the Jaguar. The Jag, well, yeah, it's the Jaguar. Uh, um, it's it's based off like so the Omex thought that they could shape shift in the Jaguars, and that's what it is. It's like a Jaguar man, like a wear Jag or whatever you would say. So Jaguar paw is that were they the Omex or what? What was that from Apocalypto? They were Mayan or Aztec, I think. Okay. Yeah, I, I believe they were Mayan or Aztec. I can't remember which one, but. They, they weren't all mixed. Okay. Just thinking of like Jaguar. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, was that a must problem. have been a part of that. So that's, so yeah, so I mean, you watch Apocalypto, that's like the all mixed, but probably a lot grimier, you know what I'm saying? Before that. Yeah. You know, uh, so that's the whole tie in behind it. But uh, like, I don't know, like, like you're asking, like, I don't know, it's like, you always have to create something new. Because then you have, like I was talking about that brand in Hawaii. It's been the same logo forever. Yeah. People love it. All he's doing is it's just like flipping. like music, right? Yeah. Like, you keep on making what got you there and start changing it up, right? But you still yeah. want to evolve, you know what I'm saying? Right. So that's why I still do side projects and I still like, I still experiment and like sometimes they're, re <clears throat> sometimes they're received well more than they, they are others, you know what I'm saying? <coughs> I think what was dope is how you flipped the um, the general, you know, oh, yeah. uh, because it was something different, yeah. but it was still part of the same structure. Right, yeah. So that's something that you can flip as well as much as the original logo. Yeah, so that's the reason why I did that, yeah. too. So the lieutenant and the general, I could, like, kind of like flip-flop. splitting flop. atoms. Yeah, I okay. could flip-flop them back and forth. And then now I also have, like, an Aztec. Uh, coming out that all you all you Aztec heads out there will definitely like this one but I have that coming out <coughs> and that one is gonna be crazy I like that that shit is so ill <coughs> and then um just just creating different colorways like <coughs> sometimes it's already in my mind and I'm already like putting the colorway and sending it in the order already but sometimes I go on Facebook and I'll ask, like, you know, I've been in the forum, like, what colorways would y'all like to see? Yeah. And a lot of times it's colorways I've already done. Like somebody said purple. I already had purple ordered. Somebody said orange. I already had orange ordered. It was funny. And then it's, it's funny because, like, I already had another one that I had ordered. Um, it's, a, it's a Gucci colorway. And then I saw somebody had said Gucci colorway. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So this Gucci colorway, this one is going to be a snapback, but I'm doing a fitted because it's so dope. I'm going to flip it a little bit, Yeah. but I love the fucking hat so fucking Those thin. are dope colors, though. That's a dope combination of oh, colors. Oh, man. It's so sick. It's so fucking sick. Yeah. And then, like, the the, uh, the embroidery that I'm using, it's a metallic embroidery. It's the stone head? Yeah. So the it's going to... Huh? The original. The original. Yeah. And, um... Uh, all the embroidery is metallic, so like it's metallic gold, metallic red, metallic green. It's just gonna be like, pow. now that one, I got the inspiration from the colors, specifically because I've seen Gucci colorway hats, New Era hats before. Like all everybody's done a Gucci New Era colorway, but nobody's ever done a Gucci New Era colorway like the way Major Bach from DC Major. It's a it's a store. In DC, streetwear brand, they put out some of the dopest new era hats ever. Um, I got the idea from them because they did uh, this flip on the Maybach sign. It's called Major Bach, and they used the metallic green and red. I was like, Yo, who's a, yo, I gotta use that, and so I fucking put it on this uh, Stonehead hat. Man, it's gonna pop. 
Let's just say that. Yeah. And then what's dope is, uh, I'm, just, I'm I'm giving details. You know, normally I don't do this, but uh, of like the colors and all that. But like this one, the stone head, the actual helmet part is gonna be gold, metallic gold. Yeah. So it's gonna be a little different than the normal. Well, now you have to drop it. It's 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 dropping. All right. <laughs> It's dropping. You gotta drop it's it. gonna drop um, mid March is when I have it like on the on the line. I have a lot of ads like in between them that I'm gonna drop like the Toltec. Like people are really gonna like that one. Yeah. Um, That's what you have on right now. The right? T-shirt, yeah. This is a T-shirt that goes with it. I've had the T-shirts for a while. Um, it's funny because like there was a fucking some fucked up shit. I had to send the hats back to New Era um, to to get a new batch because. The embroidery was messed up on it, so um, I just got the hats back, and I'm gonna shoot the promo for them, and then you know put them up for sale the first of March. I have one more hat drop. It's gonna be another general. It's coming. I'm um, gonna do that one this week coming up. Um, so be ready, be on the lookout for that one, and uh, tons of shit coming, man. Different colorways. Trying to flip up the design, flip the design. Um, designs, uh, newer designs, trying to flip the colors of the designs themselves because if you know, like, all the, the drops from 2016, the stone heads were all gray. Yeah. yeah. All gray. All that shading. All, the only thing that changed were the shading of the grays. Some of them were darker than others. Mm. Um, the eyes, you know. But this year, I'm, like, blending and fading in the, 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 uh, the color of the hat with the, the face um, so like you know I dropped that that is a spin off of the San Francisco Giants I just dropped that hat I called it the orange cream and that one was based off the SF Giants and that one I made the fucking stone head face orange shit popped and people liked it and it sold out so you just have to keep being creative with the stone head I guess so man I guess that's what it is man um What's funny about 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 RCG is that people there's some people that the cores the core people that always like cop it always support it. Yeah. There's people that are new that are just finding out about it. There's people that were into it but are not really buying it anymore. And then there's people that are into it but buy it sporadically. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, you know, like, not everybody has money to buy every hat. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And that's cool, and I understand that. And I respect that because that means people have priorities. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And, um, and it's a lot of hats, you know. You got to be a hat collector to, you know, you're going to have your core of hat collectors, but you're right. going to have people pop in and out. Exactly. Here and there, you exactly. know what I'm saying? Because they're not even hat collectors like that. Exactly. Yeah, so. you, you you hit it right on the head. Man, there has been so many times that I've seen people cop hats for me. I'll go to their Instagram page. They ain't posted one pic of a hat. Not one pic. There's people that buy hats from me through Instagram. Well, not through Instagram, but have like inquired. I go to their Instagram page. They don't even have a picture up. Not even a profile picture. They're just following people, and people yeah. are following them. So it's like, and these are legit people. It's just people that they, I don't know how the fuck they found out about me. I don't know what the fuck, but they found out about me, and they buy my hats. And as long as they buy my hats, yeah, I don't give a fuck, a you know? But that's a trip. So it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's not always people who buy hats all the time. And so that's why I totally respect that. And not every hat is for everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah. I had a homie, like... But that's what you want, though. You want... You don't just want this... You want the same people, but you want to grow, too. You want more people to reach out to. And it's going to be a diverse group of people. Yeah. Basically. Like, you know, you want to... You want that sporadic shit, like, when people... When people buy, and then you just have your core. Um, And mind you, this is all online. You know, this is not, like... You know, the only time I've ever done anything hand over fist at all is when a homie here has picked up one, like you. Yeah. Um, and then, like, when I was in Maui, well, which was a crazy experience, you know, doing shit hand over fist. And and then, um, man, just shout out to all those people in Maui, man, for real. 
everybody that came out to Black Friday, anybody that even just asked about the hat, peace to y'all. Anybody that, that, even if you just ask about the hat, like, that's respect for me, you know what I'm saying? Like, for me, that's cool, like, like, I'm, I'm in this, like, as long, as long as I'm making money, but obviously doing what I love, but still making money, obviously nobody wants to do shit and not make money. So, if I'm not making money, then that's, that'll be the day I just close up shop yeah. and move on to the next shit. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But right now, things are good. It's doing well. It's doing well. And, like, I just look bright. I look for a bright future for the brand and just newer things to come. And then, like, I actually, honestly, like, like I want to get into brand building. Like, and not only with mine, but I want to get into, like, building brands. Like, building, like, like from the ground up. Like, I feel like I have, my brother-in-law in Atlanta is actually putting together this kind of, like, not super group, but a group of people, uh, um, entrepreneurs that can like we can all pull from the same resources mm. and like he already is trying to get me like to do um, this brand building for this for this company for this this lady he knows out there that it's like she she actually she's doing well but they want like some new ideas this lady makes um, she has Italian yeah, I know. brand building. Yeah. yeah, she she has bags made in Italy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying from designs that she has, and uh, and so he's like talking about doing brand building. She's trying to find a way to remarket it. Yeah, to, yeah. Uh, today's and he's always telling people about my brand. You know what I mean and how I did it. How I did it just from Instagram. I have a, you know uh, a buddy that I worked with. Um, he's just astonished. You know, like he can't believe. He's like just off Instagram. My cousin, who, um, one of the, he's, well, he's one of the, he was one of the lead designers at Volcom, and then he, he, uh, he works at Crew Denim now, which is another skate brand, related brand, uh, and he's part of marketing and design there, too, and he couldn't believe it either, he was like, damn, he's like, it's crazy, but that just goes to show you the power of the platform of Instagram, um, and just like uh, social media in general, if you put it to good use, you know, you can do anything. Mm-hmm. Um, you just got to put in, like, plug in away. Anything is possible right now. I mean, with all the information out there, like, you don't have to ask anybody a question. You can just type it in your phone and yeah. you'll get an answer. And that's kind of even what Gary V said on that video um, I posted uh, not too long ago. He, he said, uh, man, he's like, if you can't go on Google and look it up for yourself, he said, he said, fuck you. Yeah, for real. Like, well, like you have YouTube instructional guides, you know what I'm saying? T- <coughs> uh, tutorials. It's all there. Um, like, know, I just found out some shit today I never even really heard about before about investing in property with 401ks. And, and I'm like, or a Roth RA. And I'm like, what the fuck? Damn, that's crazy. What, financing, I mean, um, using the money in your Roth IRA yeah. to finance uh, properties. Yeah, so it's tax free. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. and I'm like, whoa, whoa. Like, I mean, I, I, it's one of those things like you hear it, but you don't connect to it at the time. Yeah. And then like you finally like connect it, and you're like, oh shit, because you finally like, oh, okay. But that's how I'm, how I am. Like, I'm always trying to make money. I'm always trying to, like, even beyond just the brand, you know, like, I'm always, like, thinking of new ways to make money, and that all came from my mom. My mom was a hustler like that. She had that mentality, and so, uh, like, I'm always trying to, like, so people say they can't get money. I'm like, you got to be able to get money somehow. Either get a job, and then figure out your shit from there. You know what I'm saying? Or you gotta be willing to fucking grind it out and mm-hmm. fucking live like on ramen noodles. Everything, like, man. It's sacrifice, dedication. You know what I'm saying? I went through it. Yeah, you know? and we've all made we've all made that decision where we should have like made oh you know we should have taken action, but we didn't. You know, and like I was kind of tired of that. You know, like 
I had taken action on some stuff, but some things fell to the wayside, and I told myself, I'm going to do less of that and do more of acting and making it happen mm -hmm. and just doing it and, like, not thinking twice about yeah. it. And that's why I went full force with the brand and just put in all my, my own money, and now it's just built up, like... You know, it's like yeah. Once you make that decision, man, to to go in, it's gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? But if you one foot in, one foot out, it's not gonna work. No. And you depending on what you got, depending on what it is, you know, you gotta be able to sacrifice that right. in order to make it happen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can't just want to do the idea but never act on it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So that's that's the whole basis. The reason why I'm even where I'm at now. Because, like, if it weren't, there was, I always give credit to these people. I always give credit to Dan Campo and all them. Because if they wouldn't have posted the pictures, like, nobody would even know about the brand. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was all a trickle effect. You know what I mean? And, and so now, like, like I said, I'm just, I'm just ready for the future. So 2017, be ready for, like, mad drops, mad colorways, newer designs. So, like I said, there's going to be some new with a twist. And something new with a flip, you know what I mean? So or, where can um, everybody find this at? So you can follow me at uh, Gorilla Roo, and that's Gorilla underscore Roo at, on Instagram, or RCG Official on Instagram. Uh, that's where I post everything, uh, mainly on my on, on mine. Uh, my, my my page is RCG page anyway, so. Uh, go to either page you'll find out something the website is on there it's rcg official you can google it um there's a web store on there do you have rcg.com i have rcg.com that's a good um domain name yeah you know domain names have value yeah 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 actually i, I got actually, a bunch of domain names too yeah <laughs> i coughed them man I, I went ahead and just scooped up like anything that kind of related to my name that i could cop uh I just I just bought the rights to it and now I own the, the domain name. So, but the actual domain name to the web store is rxcxgofficial.com. But you if you just google rcg official, it'll pop up. Yeah. Um <clears throat> and yeah, you just hit me up on there, you know, and just be on the lookout for heat. Um you know, and I'm, I'm always looking to work with people. Um, like I said, I got some shit in the works right now that people were, were in the talks. We'll just say that, but nothing's like set in stone yet. And something may not even happen, but just be ready for um, for a lot of stuff from me no matter what. Like, I'm coming with the heat. I'm bringing the heat. And, you know, just, just be ready and just be sure that... Uh, you know, you just check me out on Instagram. All right, brother. Well, thank you for coming on, man. Word um, up. Like I said, man, you, uh, you've you done an incredible job getting this thing growing. Um, I see the vision. You know, um, much success. You know what I'm saying? And I, I still got plenty of cops to to get from you, you know what I'm saying? I still have a, I still have a Rick Vega, like, little stash, like, you Man. know what I'm saying? Like, but, uh, when it, it's, it's kind of like one of those, uh, uh, I'm those, I'm the yeah. other guy that buys hats every, uh, I'm with the movement, but I buy them, you know, sparingly. Yeah, yeah. No, I got, I got them on ice for you, man. Like, yeah. I always got a three-eighths of every hat, you know what I'm saying? On ice for you, whenever you want to copy it, it's all good. There's a Rick Vega stash locker, you know what I'm saying? It's there. But, that's, that's not for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Word, no, man. but shout out to Rick Vega, man. Make sure y'all check out Eastside Morales, man. SoundCloud, YouTube. Let's get those algorithms up. I'm a big YouTube head. So, you know what I'm saying? Let's uh, let's let's do that, man. Let's like, and shout out to his, his brother's been doing it. You know, uh, I still remember doing, you know, helping him out with the blog for a short year or half a year or whatever it was, you know, trying to help him. Know what I'm saying when it was on the actual platform, like you know, website, but now we're doing podcasts, you know, yeah. like with a new wave, the new future, you know what I'm saying? So make sure you check this brother out. Word up, all right, bro. Peace. 
Once again, I want to thank Gorilla Roo and a big shout out to all the listeners. Uh, be sure to subscribe, follow, like on all social media platforms, Eastside Morales on everything. That's SoundCloud, iTunes, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. So until next week, everybody be easy. Peace.